Hey you! You know what you need? Razors. You know what the Dollar Shave Club has? Razors! So stop paying so much for razors and join the Dollar Shave Club, you hairy person. They let me write this ad, and I know you like being insulted a little bit, don't you, you hairy degenerate? Dollar Shave Club is the smarter choice. Get a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your door. Think of it as a life hack that keeps you near your video game console and not out at some store being eyeballed by that cashier. Yeah, I know you're looking at me, Tony! What are you going to do about it? Tim uses Dollar Shave Club's executive razor with that Dr. Carver shave butter. And you know what he's always telling me? He says, ooh, I'm a smooth boy, Greggy M. And then he takes a bath. <laughs> For a limited time, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of Dr. Carver Shave Butter for only $5 with free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. That's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. There are no hidden fees, no commitments. Cancel anytime you like. You can only get this offer exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash greggy. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash greggy. Kevin made me read this ad multiple times against my will so I didn't laugh. There are, we've been working on this album um, and we're still working on it. It's done. Uh, I really, really wanted to, I was going to try and like, uh, there's a point that I'm going with this. Uh, I'm sorry, Tim Gettys. Oh, no, it's cool. I just, you know, <clears throat> want to pretend I'm cool and stuff, but I don't know what You don't have to pretend. You're really these. cool. I saw Thank you kind of funny that. live. And you, dude. I think my thing. Try you kind of my thing. thing. Yeah. I couldn't be there. You know, yeah, Andy, cool, man. This is what I'm always saying. Do you know where I was? These guapos. That's what the I was in Ireland. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds pretty cool. I was in Ireland when that was happening. Thank you. Um, it was insane. It was insane. It looked insane. Like I, especially coming from well, the, the tangent, which is a good one to follow. This whole show is just a tangent. No sweat. By the way, cheers. Cheers. By the way, I have yeah. a guitar here. Cheers. You do? Oh my that god. We could just. Oh my god. Do that. <clears throat> You know, national anthem player. Well, wait, real quick, I want I want it. you guys to know, I want you to inform me. Sure. What's the differences between these? Like, are, is There's one nicer? A, oh, than this another? is whiskey and this, this is, is bourbon. Does well, this well, yeah, yeah, in terms of like, right, right. So, a this is uh, you cannot actually technically have a scotch unless it is from Scotland, mm -hmm. right? Oh. So it's Japanese, right? But yeah. there was. Yeah. Um, I believe it was McCallan himself went to Japan, Tokyo. And brought over scotch and they fell in love with it. And so they started making it themselves. And so they truly make a great scotch whiskey. But <clears throat> uh, Hibiki or Yamazaki is technically scotch, but they won't call it scotch. So it's a Japanese whiskey. But this is, it's a fantastic, especially in the summer, is, is amazing, amazing. Is like a real refreshing kind of whiskey. <clears throat> this is a small batch bourbon. Yeah, 1792. That's a, that's a, a um, remnant of, Man, my brain is moving at literally it's 90 Six or inches in front of your six pants. Six inches in front of my... <laughs> Ever had a Kool-Aid jammer? Uh -huh. That's some good wow. stuff. Wow, into like a Bartles and James. <laughs> Where were you going with this? Where do you, what are you throwing? That was a, a remnant thing. of... It was a remnant of Colin, wasn't it? 1792? Well, seven, well, yeah, that's an American history thing for sure, yeah. But I'm saying that... Is that, that was a date bottle? in American Oh, I mean like... For sure. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> Pretty sure it was something they oh, had. The, the right love of bourbon goes beyond People everybody. existed in that year. Yeah. 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 There was a Castlevania human. that I just watched was in 14, was 1476. So. Mm. Oh, did you finish it? After, I did. I liked yeah. it a like lot, it? man. Me too. I did. It, it four took episodes, a four one hour four episodes. Four episodes. No, they're like episodes. 20 20? minutes. Yeah. I, I met the director at a con. Adi Shankar? No, he didn't direct it. He was executive producer on it. Someone else directed it. I thought he directed it too, but no, the. It says directed by someone else. Understood. It's good. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I have yeah. to watch this stuff. What are you watching right now? Nothing I want to I love TV. that there's no topics. Can I we just do no topics? Topic I'm discussion. totally down for no topics. Yeah, we just I mean, just I do have a question I'd like. Oh, like go. At the very end, no, no, it'll be a very good end topic when we drink a little Understood. bit more. But uh, what am I watching right now? I don't watch anything. I play video games. I watch movies every so often. Here's what I'll tell you. No one's talking about this show. It's gone under the radar. Game of Thrones. Uh, jean vivre saint Ange has been caught up on Game of Thrones. Okay. And you know you know that I love this woman. I'm not, I keep it quiet yeah, on the internet. Dude. I don't talk about that often. But now you're about to divorce her because of her opinions on this show. 
I've never loved her more than when she got to the end of Game of Thrones. She's like, it's just overrated. And I hugged her and kissed her. And I'm like, this is why we're married. I honestly, it's perfect. Greg, it's one of those things I'm just trying my hardest to your just kids, bite my your tongue kids are and suck. avoid. Like, gonna Jen, suck, huh? yeah. Jen confronted me about it yeah. a couple oh. days ago. She was very mm. drunk. And uh, she confronted me. It's also me. true. But, like, Cooking Canadian with Greggy, drunk. there's, there's going to be some interesting French episodes. Canadian drunk is a bit of Because all the sorries and the aboots go away. <laughs> she's <laughs> a neck. <laughs> she, she's not that type of Canadian, though. She, she oh, got yeah, the she boots. Is. Is she? Oh, no. oh, oh, boots. I'm sorry. I think I meant the apologies. The apologies. Oh, no, no, no. She's, <laughs> she's French Canadian. She's yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. She's very French. Um, but she's, she was like, Tim, I'm not even going to try to do her, her accent. Le Tim. But yeah, Le lot, Tim. Well, there's a lot of ways in there. Uh, but she's trying to explain to me why she but thinks so. that Game of Thrones is just okay. And so, I just like, I just, I just can't have that conversation. Okay. Here's, here's, here's where I'm at with it. Um, I I love watching it. I love the ceremony of watching the show. It's Sunday. Lights it's down. Sunday. Sunday is our drink? pasta day. Sous vide. I pasta day. So uh, so I cook my pasta sauce. I make a great bolognese. I do like real beef. All this is from scratch. Uh, yes. So my next step is I've got a great base right now, but I want to start making my own like sauce from scratch. Like mm. the problem is you can only make your sauce from tomatoes in the summer. So I kind of started a little bit too late. Gotcha. Um, but you start from the base and you, you do your, your beef and you do uh, veal and, oh, yeah. and then I use pancetta in, yeah, the, oh, in yeah. the sauce. So like that melts down. It's freaking great. So we make pasta all day. The house smells great all day. And then it's, it's you know, start off with John Oliver, uh, kind of get a good little you know, kickoff, a little yeah. palate cleanser. Yeah. And then when it, when it, cause it's, you know, like the lights it's down. The do, 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 and then Pam and I, do, do. we make up our own lyrics. Every time, oh, Thrones, same. Game of fucking Thrones. Same. Do you do the same thing? Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, now here What's we John are Stone watching doing? the show. Please and end it quickly. Is off. Ballers is next. I <laughs> like <laughs> Ballers. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I love. I would just love to like be on the outside of like just hovering above the earth and and be able to tune into the cacophony of all the people <laughs> yeah, that are yeah, singing yeah, their yeah. own lyrics <laughs> to that song. So I love the ceremony of it. I think that. Arya's uh, um, storyline is the most compelling. A thousand um, percent. She, she's especially awesome. last. Shut, shut up, she Tim. has become awesome. She has she's become, become awesome. awesome at three seasons of garbage. Just, just garbage. something you can do with a garbage. little nine year old. Do you remember when she had no name? That's what that I mean. Like that's all, where she's all now. of that when she, she was that. when she was at the temple and people were gonna scream. It's actually called a blah. I get it, but that whole journey. Um, even even with her being having to give up her sword and having to give up everything and and that whole that was a beautiful metaphor like that was that was amazing allegory that they used. Um, beyond that, it's fun and it's beautiful and it's really cool uh, and it's it's full of spectacle and I love spectacle, but there's a lot of other stuff that I would rather dig into and and give an hour or hour and a half or whatever of of my time to. But I love watching it. I'm I'm not hating on it at all. You watched last night's episode. I have not watched last night's episode. Yeah. I, I wasn't talking there. in your microphone. Uh, I know. Woo! So I I, so I wasn't. I want to be home. I don't want to watch it on my iPad or whatever. No, you know? so this this one out of all of them know, I deserves hear. its proper. No, yeah, be home. View, I, I hear. Be there's, home. There's, and just prepare yourself because you can't. You can't walk outside with like you watched last night Game of Thrones because yeah. the fuck thing was awesome with the shit. I'm like, damn yeah. it. Well, okay, cool. But you know what? That's a sign of a it's, good show. That people want to talk about and are excited about. You don't hear that with other fucking shit. You're okay. great. You're great point because nobody ever talked about Lost. Oh shit! But, the, but then people shit. They, first two seasons they hit a point where people are amazing. Were over it. Yeah, and oh, then I it, remember that final season, sir. We were all talking about it. Here, here's what oh. I think. I think just because it's it's uh, it was over, it permeates through a culture or it creates a culture <laughs> does not necessarily mean that it's good. No, that's absolutely true. I think this is a case where it is. This, this is a case I where... I was arguing with some people on Twitter about this. It's not this. just the nerds. You know what I, I mean? I feel like if this... If a show is widely loved and is constantly nominated for awards and, and is, you know, highly thought of among critics, I think that's a sign of a good show. I think if it's one or the other, you could make a case against like it. Like Big right. Bang Theory, which is... It's won many awards, Emmys and stuff, not critically What supported. about this? The Bachelor. Fantastic oh. show. Don't even get me started. Let's go. 
But the that, only show better than Game of Thrones. That's <laughs> on TV right God, now. Man. You and Pam. Bachelor in Paradise starting next week. I can't fucking wait. We'll serve and we'll find thing. off. We right. gotta are, find out. You are a human trash can. I, <laughs> I, I, it's true. I it's true. love it's true. Ellen Gale, who's the creator. He, he is the purveyor and the custodian of all things Bachelor. I think he's incredibly uh, bright. He's witty. He's, he's, uh, he's a genius. Um, but you have to Be look at the culture. And I'm just saying, you have to look at the culture that The Bachelor's created, mm -hmm. and Pam can watch it, and she's cool because she gets it. There's a distance and a disconnect to it. Um, these aren't normal people. These are no, these are not normal people. These aren't the, normal values. This is a, yes, exactly. We're throwing ethics and morals out the window, sure. and it's a game show. That's really at the end of it. It's it's instead of going through an obstacle course or eating weird shit, you're you're just. Fucking Sometimes people. doing that too. That's, um, that's how Joe Rogan got kicked off the show. Remember that? Did Joe he, Rogan get kicked off? No. Everyone keeps no, making dude, that joke, but no. I'm like, did he get kicked off? I no, think because we mentioned that in our in an episode of Party Man. I think no, Joe right. Rogan is it was too intelligent for Fear Factor. No, sure, yeah, he's, no, sure, he's yeah. a genius. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, his comedy is is absolutely brilliant. But I th I think that you, you you take a step back and you realize that there are. Some people in the country that this is their analog for love. This is their analog for finding love, or this is their uh, so th that that concerns me a little bit. Um, there are the ravens of the show. See, you got to tie it back to Green Game like of the Thrones. Three, the three-eyed raven. That's no, no raven. No <laughs> raven. She was the runner-up last season on The Bachelor. Okay, I don't raven know what that means. Simone was on The Bachelor. <laughs> no, Wait, but raven so Simone raven? is back on Disney. There's what? a That's So Raven sequel series. Is she, is she a mom now? rebooting it's everything, living, guys. Living with Raven. And they took forever to do crazy. a Boy Meets World thing. Now they're doing a they're fucking, fucking Raven thing. They're just fucking banging it out. It's what crazy. about Corey in the House? Corey in the that? House was the sequel to yeah. That's So Raven. Good show. What smells so good right now? Joey made pizza. Joey's yeah. making yeah. Well, uh, had like 18,000 pizza. pizzas. Yeah. Oh, I think she warmed up, up that pizza. Yeah. Yeah, then, so real funny. talk, jokes aside, sure. the thing with The Bachelor, and we've talked about this many times, where we all fell in love with MTV Road Rules Real Hell yeah. World Challenge. Hell yeah. yeah. There's just something about the reality TV with competition that is easy to fall in love with. Survivor, The Mole, whatever it is. And at the end of the day, it's the same shit as anyone watching what we're doing right now. It's the same thing. This is reality uh, TV for uh, another generation. Yes, but here's the difference. It's voyeurism. Is all it is. This is this is a conversation that's being presented to people, as opposed to a conversation in private that you're eavesdropping on. It's the same reason why people rubberneck when they go down the highway and they see a car crash. We as people want to be able to view and experience death, fear, love, love all of these things sex. from a safe distance. From sex, from a safe distance. That's why we watch horror films. That's why we ride roller coasters. Is because why we all why jump in on internet drama when something yeah. happens, right? When it's not you. When so yes. something else is happening. Some other I two want, groups are fighting. Absolutely. I want to know what it's like, what it feels like, because I'm wrestling with that X thing. Um, and, and that, to me, it's it's... I don't know if I've, I, I don't want to be arrogant and say that I, I see the matrix and I, I see what's happening, but I see why people watch The Bachelor. If she can find love, it's really hard for her. I can. Um, it's the same reason why people watch anything that has to do with weight loss. There's a catharsis that people go through and they're on the journey with people. And even though they're not necessarily doing it, I've seen people be really inspired. That's why one of the best and worst things that ever happened was um, Biggest Loser, biggest loser mm -hmm. is because it inspired a generation of people to really get active and go, I can do it if you can do it. Th th I would watch that shit before I went to go work out because I'm like, I have zero excuse. I have zero. There's a 60 year old man who's lost 150 pounds. I can get in the gym. But you taint that and you realize that it, it absolute power corrupts absolutely. And you can't have something become so successful without it becoming so tainted. And that's what the show was, and it canceled. So it's the same thing that happened when all the people that, um, uh, like the, all the televangelists, started questioning whether or not there was a God because they found that through this guy. So if this guy is bad, is God bad? And mm -hmm. there's no separation between the two. So Well, for me, it was like what you're talking about makes sense in terms of you know crossing that line and going the other way. And for me, it was growing up, 
with real world and then the start of road rules. But I remember when the real world was not to say real it was reality television, but it was real people. And it was John, John the cowboy. And it was that time they right. threw David out of the house or whatever. Right. And I forget what he did to Tammy or whatever, but he punched he, her in the car. No, that was that, that right. No, you're the Seattle one is what you're talking about. I'm talking about r- real world. <laughs> I've seen that scene a season two. Times. Apparently, remember that, remember that cool, Greg? When he like opened up the, <laughs> oh, the no, door of the car Greg, and punched you were there. her, slammed the door. So like, you're talking about Seattle, yeah? Okay, yeah. I'm talking about L.A. when it was that David D- Tammy was saying no, and he pulled a blanket off her, mm. and remember, they were like, "That's the end, that's the final line. We got to get rid of you." And Coral, we I'll never Coral. forget Coral in the challenge. She was like talking about. I think she was talking about Puck, she was like, and he came in with a machete. He had a machete, and yeah. then in the background there was a fucking machete. <laughs> I'm like, Holy shit! This guy Puck means business. Watching ro- real business. world though, it was like in grounded in reality, and people like, and this is offensive to I would assume to say at some point but even when I talk about like Ghostbusters and the fact that <gasps> with Ghostbusters like I don't think most of those people would be allowed on camera to lead a picture to do all this they're not that definition of pretty right. real world was hey you're Judd Winnick who's now you know a famed comic book art uh, author he's not like a G- GQ model but he was on he was on the show and they had people that were normal that you looked at you like I see myself in it and then I remember real world Las Vegas that first season of Las Vegas, when all they did was fucking triple kiss and shit, and you're like, triple kiss. This is now lost like the gr- the little bit, uh, it, it, three kiss. people kissing at once. Yeah, so it would be two girls and a guy. And they're like, Dog. you guys want to try it or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin Cool Greg, call him show Andy. <laughs> show on Andy. We're at the triple kiss, and that was the thing of just like, oh, like now they're just stocking these houses with beautiful, vapid people and booze. And it was like, oh, it wasn't anymore where Judd's like How trying to be a cartoonist. How many can we cause? Exactly. Yeah. Pedro was like leading a cause for AIDS awareness. It was like, oh, these, this isn't the same reality show anymore. That led to Jersey Shore, well, eventually. Was, oh. Yes, but we could all tie it back to the Kardashians. Yeah. And there's that too. But no, but that's, that's my thing with The Bachelor where it's like, what you're saying I'm sure applies to a right. large amount of the world and a large amount of the viewing population of The Bachelor. But I feel, once I realized that my girlfriend is obsessed with The Bachelor, uh, which opened my eyes because I was like, people fucking watch that show? I had no idea. But then I started realizing everyone watches it. There's so many people. You bring it up and it's going to be like a, a thing where it's like, I can't, you know someone that's obsessed. Everybody has their it. favorites and stuff. Yeah. And I can't favorites. watch everybody it because... Everybody has something to say. But the thing is that they're not <sighs> looking at it for like, a, oh, they can, they have, they, they're having trouble finding love. I can find it too. But These some are mostly people, people are. who have love. Yeah, some people are. But I feel like it's more, the, that show is so brilliantly edited. To fuck with people's emotions. Oh, it's, man. But it's like absolutely. they know what they're doing, and it's when you're in on the joke, when you're Why? in on what it is. And I feel like all the contestants at this point are entirely in on what is happening. There's people, it's wrestling. It's just wrestling yes. yeah. for a different audience. Yes. And that's why I love it. That is the best. Why is it that you can't watch it? Because hey, my, won't let him. my no, my <laughs> don't get any idea. She says she'll divorce me. I will walk through the room. And first of all, to me, I'm a, I'm an adolescent, and and if you give me the opportunity to make a fart sound, I will do it. <laughs> so Game of Thrones <laughs> is just a bevy of riches. Because there's be, I mean, it's just so <laughs> easy to do. And so there's nothing better than when there's a moment of awkwardness, and she's like standing there. She's like, I just don't know how I feel about you. And he goes, and I walk past the room and go. She's like, I hear you, but it's just perfect. <laughs> perfect. Um, I I will MST3K that to the point where oh, okay. she just got, get. Would you just leave the house because it drives her crazy? Because she started like she. There's a there's a friend of ours that we have that that's that's their connection, right? Yeah. They, they they still if the anachronistic version of this would be like they still play Scrabble together or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like this is the thing that gets her to come all the way from Venice or to get my wife to go all the way down there to visit her. And that this is their common ground. It's the excuse to hang out. Sure. Um, and so Bachelor it's Mondays, man. It's a real thing. Yes. The finale is tonight. And it's sacred. It's sacred for that. I know. <laughs> yeah. So can we wrap this? Up? <laughs> um, if you didn't know, what was your topic? <laughs> oh no, no, we're no, not we're wrapping up at all. Talking. We please. We're halfway through the show. But no, what you're saying is so right though. But like what's become oh, a ritual done. for us is, <laughs> is every, gets up and every Monday when bachelor's on, it's me and my girlfriend sitting there, but it is the mystery science theater. It is okay. She, she, that's cool. She and I mean, she's in it, but like she enjoys me kind of making my dumbass comments and talking shit to the characters and like, you know, like there'll be an edit that's so clearly telegraphed. I'll be like, "Here's what's about to happen," and then that shit happens. And that's Troy, what we have. If you don't follow mm-hmm. Gia Tap Harris on Twitter, you should Who? because Gia Tap Harris—that's her Twitter handle. Gia. 
Gia, oh, wait. Gia's live tweeting of The Bachelor is her live tweeting Tim Shh. reacting to The Bachelor yeah. or The Bachelorette They're or whatever. That's all she does. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Every week Tim she can't believe this is followers. happening. Blah, blah, blah. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. You, no, it's you're fun. I love this, it. Man. It's my favorite thing ever. Exactly. Gia Tap Harris. There she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, yeah, your girlfriend, she's awesome, dude. She's she is. like super rad. She really is. She's way too pretty for you. It's very true. I've been saying <laughs> that since. Before I met her. And then I met her, <laughs> sure. and I was like, damn. When you saw her from afar, you're like, I can't talk to that woman. Yeah. She's too attractive. Yeah, like she got me hooked just... on The Bachelor, so I'm like, all right. It all worked out. It all worked out. Yeah, you guys. Uh... I talked so much shit going into it, but any single person out there that likes wrestling and says they don't like The Bachelor, give The Bachelor a fucking shot. Cool, Greg. Have you given The Bachelor a shot yet? Nah, Cool Greg he says, says nah. nah. Dude, you love it, man. Shake his head. You'd fuck yeah. it. If Cool Greg doesn't like it, it's cool. Exactly. On great it. point. But here's the question. boy, Kenny. So she won. She brought you. To bachelor. Into the bachelor nation. Is there anything that you brought her into? A whole blue yeah. toilet. The internet. <laughs> Just period. Oh, and also we got a really dope toilet that lights up. I have a motion detector in my bathroom now. Anytime you walk like in, UV? my toilet blow lights up blue. It's so cool. So okay. Good? <laughs> Kevin's in there making a sous vide in the toilet. <laughs> Guys, the steak's almost done. Um, wait, so do you... I the, here, Here's the thing. I If you go anywhere in Europe, the... Um, uh, yeah, is a thing. Yeah. We're the only country, and like we've talked. One of our first topics that got us in trouble at IGN was, was why don't Americans? Second episode, a Game of Gregory show. Why don't wow. Americans clean their buttholes? And it was about how much I love a good goddamn bidet. Right? Why and don't that why got me you get in me. trouble? We had. How are they going to sell Greg Miller us. shows if I'm talking about bidets on the on the YouTube? We had find a bidet. bidet exactly. Find a bidet well, supplier. then somebody sent us a bidet. And it, but it was like one of those janky ones you put on the toilet. No, no, no. And, there's like the one that I the one that I want is. Oh, you're gonna get the whole toilet. There's actually just like a, a like an adapter thing that you can get, but it's it's a thing. Like to me, it's kind of like a spa for your butthole. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a it's truth. It's this beautiful, peaceful, serene thing. I, I love technology. Like I can walk through my house and talk to it. That when I was in seventh grade, I think there was a short story that I read um, by Smart House, where the red friend grows. Superman, Man of Steel. <laughs> Is that it's not Smart House? It's called where the it's probably not Smart House. Smart House is a Disney the rains Channel fell movie. slowly. Is that what it is? <laughs> um, I thought it'd be Old Yeller, but I, I read not. a great one in in, in 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 grade school about this girl who moved to Mars. Goosebumps, the haunted Goosebumps thirty nine. You know, sun only comes by Mars and this side of it so often, or whatever. And everybody made fun of her for being the Earth girl, and they locked her accidentally in a closet during the time the sun came through. Animorphs. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't. I don't know. Can't remember. Dude, I love Animorphs. Shout right, out to we Tobias. Need, let us know in the comments below. Cool, cool name. The cool emo name. dude. It and was he the had like the, the, name. He had the Sean Hunter and he hair. He only turned into middle. a hawk. <laughs> red tailed like, hawk. Like, yeah. It was a red tailed hawk. <laughs> what was the name of the weird, like, blue horse dude? Oh, uh, the Anamites. Yes. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Iceman. Yeah. Oh, Sean yeah. Sean Ashmore. Sean Ashmore. Was Jake. Yeah. The, the leader of the Animorphs. Animorphs. Good show, Tim. Good show, Greg. I mean, you, you covered, I, you, I uh, it was only that you were looking at me. I don't know if you noticed, uh, earlier, Anthony and Gruber are around. He'll be a guest tomorrow yes. if you're watching live, next week if you're watching on YouTube. I kept trying to yell at you, and I go, Come on, Anthony! <laughs> and I just kept screaming Anthony at you. Oh, really? Yeah, but you really? didn't acknowledge it, and neither did his. Yeah, He's way taller and better looking than me, though. No, that's not true. There will come, it was Ray Bradbury, I'm so sorry. Uh, there will come soft rains. Um, okay. There's a, it was a, from just a literary standpoint, it's a beautiful story because there's no physical character. There's no like, there's no person, human character in the story. You're going through this house as it's automated and it's like making the pot of coffee and it's mm-hmm. doing all of these things. It's a short story. It's brilliant. So, and then the Jetsons came around and I was like, that'd be so cool. And then computer, I always wanted to do like, be able sure. to do that. Um, and so I, I have my whole house as much as can be is is like the whole automated thing. You meant yeah, we have we have an Alexa. It was when Jen moved in, she's like, We gotta get an Alexa. Dude, and I was like, sat, Okay, cool. It sat for a year before I did anything with it. I have five in my house. Yeah. It's honestly to I, I'm so into it now that yeah. it is like I wanna get a small one for the bathroom to be like in the shower and be like, Alexa, play the song or whatever. I have yeah, I Alexa, how do you get your dick out of a train? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do here? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do here? <laughs> Again? Oh, <laughs> Pulling from your history. I'm a big, uh, fan, a big fan of the Alexa. Yeah, no, it's awesome. So, like, wait, what, what level are you using? Your t- I'm only, oh, yeah. I'm only a big fan because I'm obnoxious and obsessed with myself. And my favorite random fact about this is Alexa knows who I am. If you go, who's Tim Gettys? Alexa knows no other kind of funny person. Like, hey, pulls Alexa, like, no like, way. Who's Tim Gettys? We're like, Tim Gettys is a founder Co-founder of kind of funny. funny. Blah, blah, blah. Alexa, one who's Greg Miller? I don't know. Pulling up a <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
this. This is my uh, one claim to fame. No, like Jen wanted when we were moving in. We, you know, when we were dating and she'd be coming down here, I'd be going up there. You know, music such a big music and cooking are such a big part of a relationship. Yeah. And so, like to be playing stuff, it was always off like our shitty iPhone speakers, and I'd no. have like wireless speakers. And she's like, when we move in, let's get an Alexa. And I was like, all right. And so we did. And so it's awesome to be like, Alexa, play this, or like skip this, or do that. Or for us, like we just filmed Cooking with Greggy this weekend, yeah. September. Get it early on patreoncom slash kind of yeah, funny. And I set every timer with it, pay. right? Where I'm like, hey, Alexa, set this timer. And then mm-hmm. I'm talking to Nick or whatever. But every time I'd be like, Alexa, set a 15-minute timer. She's like, setting a timer for 15 minutes. I go, future. Yeah. We'll see if it actually makes the edit. My favorite thing about the Alexa or about Google Home or about any of these things is parties. Because you'll be at a party. Everyone gets progressively drunker. And it just turns into this thing of, hey, hey, okay, Google. Play it. They just say some shit. You just see what happens. And it's just people hey, screaming Google, over each other. Tell me it's who great. my father is. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend it. Oh, geez. Okay, so we're gonna trying get, to hack Andy's Phil's phone. Phil's gotta go home. Um, and he just left. No, he gotta go to the bathroom. He just went to the bathroom. It's fine. That's but weird. I tried to hack his he phone. Uh, what's your music choice for for cooking to? Oh, it depends on the mood. Every t- here, you want to know something really weird? Whenever I get into the dishes, when it's time I for don't dishes, know, but you have to. If you ask, don't ask a rhetorical well, question. Well, here's my thing. answer. Oh, okay, so if you <laughs> Maybe are, I don't want for to for Jen and I, for most part, and this is one of the reasons that we're just meant to be together. If we're cooking, it's usually Alexa play country. She just plays hot country off of Spotify, and it's great, and we have a good time. I've too. been making the steak for too long, gonna get a sous vide and write this song. There I'm you gonna... go. No, no. Fuck you, country's no. good. You're too fucking cool. Country's man. good. <laughs> my favorite thing about Troy Baker, first off, you just, the way your mind works blows my mind. Second off. It's chaos. I just, you Six probably inches. have experienced more in your life than I think anyone sure. I've ever met. So you just have stories on stories on stories that are relevant. At some point, <laughs> like, just to think about the journey of this podcast. Like, you've actually traveled, like, drove across the fucking country. You America. You gotta do it. I'm telling you, Tim. It's you're crazy, gonna find man. yourself. Wait, you, 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 you down cool, Greg? Just me and you? No, dude, do that it. would be. Up, I go. would fucking <laughs> and you and you film it. Pay for that. You film yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Um, but I think. Wait, okay. Here's a great segue. Do you travel with your girl? Uh to, to shows. We travel to like Texas. Is now it, I'll, is this a thing? I'll jump in here right okay. now to let you know one of the sweetest stories Gia Tap Harris ever told me about Tim Gettys oh. was like. Why is it Tap? They had start Tapley's her middle name. When they had started dating Gia real Tap early on Harris. in their relationship, they drove to L.A. And they didn't listen to music at all. They talked the entire time. They had great conversations. I, I like, wanted so to listen to music, but <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. No, nah, that was the moment she fell in love with. How are you me, feeling? I don't know what says. I'm feeling. Can we just listen to some <laughs> Fall Out Boy? Yeah, that's all I want, um, man. Some of that fucking Pete Wentz is that his name? Yeah, Pete yeah, Wentz, Pete Patrick Wentz. Stump, Patrick Stump. I know their names, man. I'm an emo kid, dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 I never yeah. listened. I, to do you know my my aunt Dell taught? Uh, Pete Wentz. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So whenever you hear me talk, when I get in Nick's car every day on a hot day, I always say it smells like Uncle Scott's car. Now you know Aunt Dell. Aunt Dell. Now I know Pete Wentz. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Troy. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> My mind's not as beautiful as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Try to track. Um, it's impossible. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, party people, guess what? There is a sale over at kindoffunny.com slash store up to 40% off select items Monday through Sunday. Go check it out. Have a good time. And of course, click here to go check out our Patreon. Click here to subscribe to Kind of Funny. Click here to go to Kind of Funny Games. And click down here to go to the mystery spot. Guess what? It's just a playlist of fun videos we enjoy. That's what I like to put there. Ooh, I'm a smooth boy, Greggy M.